Okay, a few more problems here. In this one, we're told to use limit notation to describe the behavior of f of x equals log x. Well, for this function, uh, a picture should come into your mind. Here's your x-axis and your y-axis, and it crosses at one right here, and it, it's asymptotic to the y-axis there, and then it grows going to the right it grows and it, as you go further to the right it grows at a slower and slower rate but it continues to grow and so we can describe the behavior here and out here with limit notation we can say the limit as x approaches infinity for this function is positive infinity this function gets bigger and bigger as we go to the right and we can say the limit as x approaches zero from the right we can't approach zero from the left because the function is not defined over in this region where x is negative. But it is, is defined where x is positive. And as we approach zero from the right, this function zooms way down. So the limit as x approaches zero from the right is negative infinity. So limit notation is used to describe those aspects of the logarithmic function. Here's another multiple choice question and one very similar to this actually showed up on an AP exam a few years ago uh, and this one's not hard For, uh, some of them are don't get me wrong some of those AP exam questions are very tricky but in this one we're told for which of the functions above does the limit as x approach, approach 3 as x approaches 3 exist okay let's look at this first one here well as we get really close to 3 we're getting really close to a particular y value so the limit exists there. The, the y value is different from the value of the function there, but that's okay. The function's not continuous at 3, but it does have a limit. Same thing happens over here. As we get very close to an x value of 3, we get very close to a particular y value. And the function is not defined at that point. There's a little hole in the graph right there, but that's okay. It still has a limit. We can still get as close as we want to to this y value by keeping x sufficiently close to 3. So the limit does exist there. And then in number 3, uh, graph number 3 over here, uh, the limit as we approach 3 from the left is one value, and the limit as we approach 3 from the right is another value. So the left and right side limits are not the same. So the limit does not exist there. So the question for which of these graphs does the limit as x approach 3 exist, it's 1 and 2. So your answer is D. And one more. We're told to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x over x. So what does this graph look like? Absolute value of x over x. Well, let's plot a few points. If x is, say, 3, then we have a 3 over 3, which is just 1. So let's plot a point there. Um, if x is 2, then we have 2 over 2, so that's just 1. If x is 0.1, we have 0.1 over 0.1. You can see for any value here, we just have a, a horizontal line but there's got to be an open circle right there. The function doesn't exist at x equals 0 because we can't have a 0 denominator. Now for negative values of x we get a little bit different behavior because of the absolute value sign. Let's just imagine if x is negative 1 then we have the absolute value of x which is positive 1 over x which is negative 1. So that gives us a negative 1 or if we have a negative 2, put in negative 2 for x, then that gives us 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. For any number less than 0, any x value less than 0, this function will evaluate to negative 1. So it looks like this. And open circle right there. So that's what our graph looks like. We're told to find the limit well, the limit, in this case, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. But we can 
very easily use limit notation to describe the behavior here. We can say the limit as x approaches 0 from the left, and you can see here that it's negative 1, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is positive 1.